Hello everyone, welcome back to another retrocast this time around. Once again, I'm Alexander against Certex, or better known as Dirty D, who you hopefully know from various tournament games or just general team games that I played with. Very, very old school player playing since European Escalation. Actually playing since Ruse, in fact, a play game that I never played, but heard of, of course. I'm so very old school. Uh, one of the old guys for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, this is from, I think, April 2015. So relatively shortly after the official release or the, the public release of the scan the DLC, like three months. Um, I don't really know what the exact meta was, but it looks like... Uh, oh, is this Norad? This might be Norad, because at first I thought this might be Blue Moto, but given that the dab is a prototype, I would say this is Norad. So Norad, which was a new addition with the Scandi DLC, together with Landjut and so uh, Softcore, which many or some of you may not have ever seen, because Softcore, Soviet Korean Alliance, Soviet, uh, USSR plus North Korea, used to be a thing only up until... I don't know when it was removed, I think it was removed with the Red 4 DLC, i.e. Yugoslavia and Finland, plus Baltic Front and Entente, of course. I believe, but I may be wrong, maybe a bit earlier. But around the paid DLC in mid to late 2016 is when it got removed. Um, yeah, and Emil Alexander playing Scandinavia, by the looks of it, very similar to the game versus me. You also might notice that the zones here are a bit different. For one, Fox, Trot, and Hotel are both one pointers. On top of that, India extends further here. Uh, in the current war game, I believe it's cut off around this part. So basically, this triangle here is cut off, um, making or giving um, this side less of, of an advantage. Especially with those sides being one pointers and the zone layout being like this. Blue 4 had a massive advantage, just pushing Alpha as well, because for one they had a direct road into it, so they had a much faster road, but also just, compared to now, this extra position obviously gives them a small head start. Anyway, what do we see here? Actually, this is not mech, unless those NM 1.3s carry reservists, and the 135s carry line infantry squads. Maybe this isn't mech. I really, it's hard to tell right now, um, because it could very much be that the rovers are actually available and mechanized back then, and only removed afterwards. This, on the other hand, is guaranteed moto, because the left scout comes on veteran, which it doesn't outside of motorized decks. You have Bisons with Alec Canadian Airborne or Highlanders, Grizzly with what I presume are Eric squads. I don't know how Eric squads were at this point, because for a while, the HE Eric squads, the five men one, like the, the fist squads, dealt massive damage to other infantry. And with massive damage, I mean morale damage, basically instantly stunning them. I remember specifically Nande being very vocal about it. Uh, Nande can't escape these videos, can he? Um, anyway, typical CV, Jeep CV. Like I said, or like I mentioned, these days, of course, you still see Jeep CVs, but back in the day, Everyone just used Jeep CVs. Even in team games, Jeep CVs, Jeep CVs, Jeep CVs. Of course, these days, with artillery being more prominent, you know, you don't see them as much. And, you know, I'm not saying they're useful, or so you should never use them, but artillery these days is just used a lot more. So, obviously, CV sniping is also happening a lot more. But that doesn't mean that CV sniping never happened at all. It was still very much an occasion, but more with, like, bombers and sneaking around, not so much with artillery. But again... I know, I'm not saying it didn't, but from what I remember, it just uh, a diff bit different than back then. The meta, of course, was also a bit different. And um, yeah, let's just see. Panzerbrill, I mentioned it in the video that I had against them. I believe at this point it's probably still bugged, given that 21 RPM. I think these days it's 19 RPM with a proper rate of fire. And this is 21 RPM over a whole minute, right? Just like the Amex 13 shows, I think, 13 RPM over a whole minute. The actual rate of fire within like a single burst is much, much higher. What do we have here? Avenger engaging a Fennec 20mm. M35. Both seemingly fairly defensive here. Outside of the gunship trying to sneak around. I'm actually surprised to see this unit. 
uh, you don't see it a lot nowadays, and you, I'm pretty sure you didn't see it a lot back then. But what, what I'm also finding interesting is that Dirty only started with one CV. That is quite rare back then as well as, as it is now. STRF is on veteran, so this is mechanized. So this means those carry reservists, and these carry the 135s carry line squads. Another thing you might see, and you already might not immediately see, the autocannon, the RH202, which is the same, or stat-wise, I don't know if it's in real life the, actually the same autocannon, but in-game at least it's the same autocannon as the one on the Mario 1, as well as the VAP T20. has 15% accuracy and 5% stabilizer. Uh, they both got... I don't know which patch, but eventually a 5% accuracy buff as well as the later versions from 15 to 20 and the later versions from 25 to 30, which is also what the BVPs of course have. Panzer builds pushing in with TGBs. Uh, the TGBs trying to sneak uh, to get out of the line of sight of the lav scouts. I think it might have been better if he just continued pushing onwards. They have no armor and they have a low rate of fire, so he might have gotten like an oh baby. Uh, the Aurora RBS, of course, also not being armored at all, and the Panzer builds with only having only one front armor um, are actually losing out completely, completely to the Lav Scout at that range with a superior range, superior accuracy, and um, yeah, veterans as well. And the Avenger just moves forward. Um, yeah, okay, this is interesting. So he killed a Fennec 20 millimeter here, and I assume also the Recon helicopter. What does Eman Alexander see? Nothing at the moment. Now he sees a bit, but Eva got it just a bit too late. Avenger fires and could get a bit lucky. Yep, that's what no ECM does to you. Oh, this this <laughs> this is quite ballsy. Yeah, I was I was gonna say, does he go down the river right here? Going down the river is probably uh, rather uh, dangerous. Oh my, there's so much stuff happening. So much stuff happening here. Let me actually quickly close this down. What do we have here? Bunch of cheap infantry, 5 NO2s, no AA whatsoever. He had two RBS 90s here, but they obviously died, but since then no additional RB uh, AA at all. Um, the Is it a Huey? I think it's a Huey. The rocket pod helicopter got dealt with by the man pad. Those are Canadian rifles, actually. Canadian rifles, I think, back then were actually part pretty decent. I think they had an above average MG, obviously not an MG3, but when it came to line infantry squads, I believe they were among the better ones, um, or at least I thought so, maybe I was wrong. Emmet AGS, four of them, obviously with a massive rate of fire, they were auto-loaded back then already. Can deal quite a lot against all these cheap five-pointers that have only one armor, um, as soon of course as he deals with the Leopard 1. And since there's no IFVs, no SDRFs, no CV90s, there's not much that can deal with this. Also an MPT-70, I'm pretty sure this isn't available in Modras anymore, and also as you can see only had 4 HE back then. Still surprised to actually see it. I was never a fan of it. And most of the stuff you got dealt with, except for the Eric's and Navy Seals. Um, Eminem Alexander probably just probing with the SRF, but this... Honestly, if he if he can just force these squads to stay in there, with like some panzer builds scattered around, of course it's not economically the best thing he can do, but just scattered around, then they might not even have that much impact, because, of course, if... And Alexander wants to push in this area, he's just gonna spawn down there, right? And if he wants to push this area, he's gonna push down there. And since he has no fob, he will probably never really need to drive something back from the front line to this spawn. Um, but the, of course, the opener didn't go his way at all. I mean, AGS has just completely demolished the stuff. The Leopard 105s went really micro very well against the AGSs. I assume probably because Emil Alexander was also busy on this area. So this was. Luck or very well timed, what whatever it is, by uh, Dirty D. Also, this is actually the Kaiwa with just the rocket pods. I thought, yeah, I thought it was a Kaiwa warrior, warrior, I believe it's called, uh, the one with the Hellfires. Two Bradleys. Oh, those are those Bradleys actually, the forty-five point ones. I believe around this time the Tau Two Bradley was also a good bit cheaper. I think like eighty points maybe. I was actually quite. This was. You have to keep in mind, oh, there's AA, but it's gonna get killed by that AGS. Uh, I was actually very much for nerfing the Bradley, because that was before smoke matter, and during that time, stealth tanks, and especially stealth tattoos, were actually really strong. Um, it's probably still honestly deserved nerf, but if you went back in time with current knowledge, it probably wouldn't be as strong as it was, comparatively speaking. 
Or the Kusjager just absolutely demolishing the dab, of course. Stinger's help as well, but I think the Kusjager honestly would have been able to deal with it alone since the dab has no turrets on its uh, anti infantry guns and thus needs quite a while to turn. And with ha without having armor, infantry actually deletes helicopter, the these types of helicopters. More service spam coming in. Um, not really the best reservists, but the only ones I think you have available in Scanning Mac. There you can see that ridiculous rate of fire, and the AGS is of course having no armor, meaning they get just eaten up. And this was quite an quite an unnecessary push with those AGSs. They were both heavily damaged, and against the mech deck that has just IVs and low AP guns out of the bazoo. Quite a dangerous maneuver. Um, and you can also see RBS 56 with 26 AP, just enough to one shot the 12 armor of the MPT 70. Eric's being able to get one shot off, but immediately immediately get deleted by those two Panzer Brills. Again, that ridiculous rate of fire. Eric's dealt with the, those couple of infantry squads that moved in there and killed one of the Canadian rifle squads, but there's new stuff coming in. There's still one AGS though in the back, but we can at least hold the line. There's the two LHBs. Um, Ideally, probably maybe a bit split, but actually now spotted by the Bradley. Obviously, Bushmas are not the best. All they can do with this stuff. Surprisingly aggressive with the Bradley. I mean, this is not a, not an expensive one, but I wouldn't really use it in this area with only two front armor, low rate of fire auto cannon. It's so it's really not the best place to be in with the Bradley. It's Bradley in general is just much more of a defensive. Uh, recon unit because its main advantage is the stealth combined with the missile rather than the stealth with the auto cannon. And the missile, of course, is a long range weapon rather than a short range one. And on top of that, the auto cannon is just among the worst auto cannons in the game. Arguably the worst because I believe the what's it called on a warrior? The uh, the Raiden, I think, it technically has a higher rate of fire. Um, but at the same time, it also has a lower accuracy, I believe, and no stabilizer. Um, so, yeah. And yeah, and of course, you only have two front armor. And um, I believe the M3A2 Bradley, i.e. the one with the Tau 2, didn't have the five front armor test now, back then. Because with the Israel DLC, it was actually a major overhaul of a lot of APC and IFV transport, uh, APC and IFV armor, such as the AMX 13, five pointer, right? Went from one to five uh, to three armor. The M113, M113A3, I think from two to three or something like that. Anyways, that 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 whole patch also introduced like a lot of five pointers with more than one front armor. And that obviously was a massive shift in the beta and in the beta in, when it comes to the meta, especially long term. Short term, maybe not as much, but uh, back then we were already very much aware how big of a difference, to, how big the difference between 1 and 2 armor is. Although I think, like I said, it wasn't yet as much about spamming those 5 pointers. And then we can see that SK-60B in action, like I said in the previous video, one of the previous ones, those are basically 100% laser guided bombs, 100% accuracy laser guided bombs, they always hit top armor, and against an AGS that I believe has a top armor of 1, I think the one is enough to just kill one with a, with a guarantee really. And uh, the Avenger being right next to it without armor, of course, means that by the splash damage of the AG, it also gets killed. Leopard C2 being bored here for Alpha, so Dirty immediately realizes, well, I'm not gonna hold this. But he has a plus 2 going, it's gonna take Delta soon. I was a bit, uh, for a second I was surprised to see him buy Delta to me before Foxford, but of course this is just a one-pointer, exactly like Delta. Um, I think what Dirty really, really should try to do is get some Eric squads or Light Riflemen, which doesn't look like he has in the deck, unfortunately in this town, so we can continue to shut this area down. Pioneers? I completely missed it. Also not seen very often. Navy Seals and Eric's deal with all those reservists. SK-60B, but he doesn't have line of sight anymore. He might fire a position here, I assume. He tried, but obviously, yeah. Fire position back then already didn't quite work with that thing, at least. But it was one disadvantage. 20 point truck just to repair this cool stagger from 1 to 15 men. Makes sense because a single squad costs like what 60 ish points, given that it also comes in a helicopter transport. Also, 40 points. That costs 35 now, don't they? I'm pretty sure they cost 35 now. Let me actually pause for a second. I have the armory tool actually still open. Kustia got a 90. They do, in fact, cost 35 now. Bradley, the base tower, while it only has 15 AP, obviously still enough to one-shot any one armor transport. And still be danger too with the Leopards, because they only have 12 front armor. Also, another thing, during the time, 
It's like 80-ish point tanks were basically the norm. You saw Nanda just used the T-72Bs and nothing heavier, I believe. Or B1s, I believe it might have been. Or maybe you only bought T-72As? In any case, you didn't really see a lot of heavy tanks, so... Um, the Tau 2 was actually not quite needed. I think the I Tau might have been even enough most of the time, but this, again, this also means that even the base Tau is actually not nothing to scoff at. But uh, at that range, medium optics is enough to spot the Bradley, and with the 17 AP, you only need 3 additional AP to one shot the 2 front armor of the Bradley, and being so close, this is obviously more than enough AP that you get through kinetic scaling. Leopard T2 coming in, effectively a one, Leopard 1 in 5 NO2 with 2 less front armor. If basically the same gun set, 65, 55, and 17 AP, 5% uh, more safe blaster, I guess. But again, less front armor. Um, for only f for only five points more, I get two front armor. Seems like a great deal to me. Back then, I also was a maybe not back then, but around this area of the game, this era, I guess is a better word. Um, when especially when mixed blue model was quite a thing. I really enjoyed Scandinavia motorized because they got this fancy tank, which Blue for motorized didn't. I was also kind of like of the opinion that Blue for motor is OP, and I wanted to be kind of a hipster by not playing it. You know, you get the gist. Oh, that was not a that was a weird strike. I guess the SK60 was in such a position that the laser guided bombs or technically missiles, but damage wise they're like LGBs, couldn't turn fast enough into the Bradley. So that was actually kind of lucky. Um, but yeah, I, I I was I was I had too much pride, I guess you could say, to play blue moto, so I played scanny moto instead. These are still not dealt with, so a lot of I mean maybe not a lot of points since those are just reserves, but a lot of still some points and some micro being used on this side to deal with those squads, and there's still a <laughs> navy seal squad. Now it's uh, still. I mean, Alexander preparing the counter-offensive. Even more reservists. Those reservists have not really done all too much for him since he since he tend to tended to like the fire support. SK60B coming in once again. But he's also quite sneaky in this side, and especially with the 105 NO2 around the flank. Uh, that two side armor and even just three front armor of the AGS could not be enough to even survive a single shot if he's close enough. But I think if he fire from this area, I think the AGS is most certainly a one shot. Just enough line of sight to get one missile of two, in fact. He might have actually fire positioned by the looks of it. Must have been a fire position, otherwise it would have killed the Bradley. Avenger, while they don't have a lot of range, they have a lot of accuracy. And the SK-60B has no ECM. But yeah, that's that's the one thing with the SK-60B. You basically want to fire it at max range, and then it is actually quite often outside of range of especially those short range AA pieces. Against Rodents, books, etc. you don't have as much chance, but against Avengers, if you don't fly in too deep, it's actually very easy to evade them with that plane. Block 5 cluster plane coming in, probably preparing this uh, forest for, for a push, I was gonna say, but there's no push coming in. That was quite, quite a loss. Killed a single Lab scout and the AGS actually finishes off the leopard with the side shot because the navy seats were spotting for them. More reservists, but yet again, what does he do with those reservists? He lost another three stack here, by the looks of it, and there's four more coming in. And once again, no fire support. There's an SCRV, but in no position to actually shoot. He has like one LVKV, but where are the CV90s? Where are the SCRF 9040s? That's what I'm asking. That's what he needs. Where is the automatic? Surprised to not see the automatic. Still basically a stalemate on top. Not not a whole lot defending that CV, I have to say. It, it could be a single helicopter that gets lucky when the Stinger misses could be enough. In fact, I think the way the Stinger is positioned, it may have a bit line of sight, tight line of sight on an, on like this area. But I think if you fly a helicopter through there, there's nothing that that will kill it. The, uh, this uh, the Stinger is just way too deep in the forest. Kustjager actually got quite deep in here, so they could do some sneaky sneaky action. But the Hummy is further away. But of course, if they get right here, the 20 RPM 12. Heat rockets of those Kustia got a 90 could do quite a number of any any reinforcements coming in. 
Surprised to see those pioneers still in there, and surprised to see Emil and Alexander apparently not even trying to get into this, into this forest, into this town. At the same time, surprised to not see Dirty put anything in this town because sure he has the pioneers here that are effectively just spotting for him, but uh, having again Eric's or Light Raftman, which again I don't think he has in the deck, in there could provide some some uh, coverage here as well and secure Delta even more if he feels like he needs to. Um, Preparing uh, Foxtrot for a potential counter bush with A8, M48, A1, Chaparral, 40% accuracy. I think it got buffed to 45, if I'm thinking correctly. And another M8 AGS. He really, really likes this tank, or liked this tank. I don't know if he still does. Still another gunship. I mean, it's a, it's a solid rocket pod helicopter. It's okay, but like, it's mainly the, the low speed that makes it rather... How should I put it? Unattractive. And uh, in the NORAD, especially, or especially US, you have access to the Recon Cobra or other Cobras. And in Commonwealth, you have access to the Lynx H7s. Man pets will easily get dealt with by Bison and Pioneers together. No issue whatsoever. Reservists, 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 just reservists coming out from ML Alexander. And another tank in the form of the 103D. No stabilizer anymore. Like a, I'm actually, actually, I don't think I actually had it in a, shown in the video. It was in a different replay, in a three v three replay that I or four v four that it briefly went over in, in bootcamp just for shits and giggles. For a short time, it might maybe it was just until the Eastern Block DLC, but in the very early Red Dragon, every unit or like every tank that's put it that way had a stabilizer. At T thirty four, five percent stabilizer. SCRB 103B and C, 5% stabilizer. So that was interesting, um, to say at least. Another block 5 coming in, apparently he didn't learn, but it seems like this time around, at least shortly before a push, only this Avenger actually gets a shot off and misses the second missile at least. But I feel like this is just... He has no real intel, right, on this area. So this seems like quite a blind shot and I feel like with cluster planes you can kind of do that but blind bombing works a lot better with AG bombers I feel and he should have what it could have done is sent just a single LHV squad first then he see, saw it would have seen there's a leopard 2 a leopard c2 there's an m8 AGS and then could have bombed either of those maybe or the Bradley as well which he also spotted by that another four stack of LHVs like I want <sighs> I don't understand his service are fine and all, but he doesn't really have any infantry with staying power, and he doesn't have nearly enough fire support to deal with the stuff. Especially since the SCRV 103D is also spotted, as well as this AGS, but they don't seem to have line of sight. The Navy Seal spotting 103D, and the Fast Game Seeker is spotting the M8. Another Leopard C2, another AGS, another MPD 70. Lots of tanks coming in, and not a, not a, not, a, not a lot of anti-tank power on on M Alexander's side. Another SK 60B. Another reservist squad, another navy seal, or same navy seal, I guess. Try to the long way around. You don't see that. You don't see that that bridge utilized very often. Meanwhile, the Kusti got right at the spawn. They already killed something. What did they kill? A tank, a leopard T2. They should really just stay there, in my opinion. I don't think you should try to go for the Bravo CV, it's too dangerous. Because if he's if the Kosta got out there in the open, anything that will spawn in there will then just spot it immediately. Okay, he's standing, so that's a good choice. And with the 20 RPM, he can even deal with like as you can see, two stacks or three stacks coming in since he will reload very quickly. Oh he's that's that's very good to see. He's even paying attention and slightly moving them, I assume, just so he can't get bombed as easily. But what you also saw is that the explosion of them killing the bison actually uh, sh made them shaken, which is a bit funny, to be honest. LEV is coming in. Dirty D is still not realizing that those Kusekar killed quite some forces. That's like a Leopard C2, two Eric squads. That's um, like 115 points. How much are the Eric squads? 15? I think they're 15, right? And the LEVs are there too. Reki trying to sneak around. Uh, Panzer Bills, of course, won't spot them at max range, but fairly easily, although the Rekis could just sneak around this area and then they could very easily just snipe the rover with their kinetic gun. Since you have to keep in mind, no armor gets uh, de takes a double damage from AP weapons, so at max range, the Rekki actually need only three shots as opposed to five. 
And of course, if they get a bit closer, they might need uh, only two. You can see that amazing Panzer with Radio Fire. Now they both have three yards. Of course, they have some nice fire support, but it's it's really not enough. Especially because all those five pointers get killed so early by all those KE guns. Oh, there was another cluster plane coming in, maybe. Um, oh no, the SRV 103D killed the HDS here. But uh, yeah, so many kinetic guns with high rate of fire that those five pointers get killed so early. That the LHVs so out in the open that they just die too quickly for his fire support to kill dirty stuff. Cluster Bomber actually kills something, but also gets killed by the Avenger. AGS also firing in from that angle. MP70 shooting at those LHV. Might do a lot of fire position uh, AOE damage there now. Okay, sneaking over, Navy Seal sneaking over. I, was al I, I virtually saw no... This is just... This is actually quite fascinating. All in nearly all infantry that the MLX had involved was actually reservists. I really would like to know because I don't remember if this was the norm. That with scanny mech or maybe other mech decks, you would you would just spam your service and it, it works. Also those Kusegris tick what did they kill now? Holy moly. It's a chaparral. Those are the mortars. One bison, two bison, three bisons. Holy moly! And still, Amerik Center is quite on the back foot. Now I feel like he's now out of free service because he had, he finally bought some SRFs, which probably would have done so much for him. He's I don't understand like. I really don't get it. He has the SRV-105 here, he has another one coming in, but whenever he pushed with those LHVs, he had nothing to kill those tanks. He was spotting them, but he he just didn't move up. With, oh, finally those gunships, but, you know, at this point, you might as well just buy, like, three more ground squads, and the last, <laughs> then the Kusegre are out of ammo. But with, if you actually buy gunships, then those Kusegre, as you can see, will just wreck those. SK-60B again goes down. Those Avengers doing so much work, especially for being short range. Oh, that's already GG. Well, that was a fast one. Uh, despite those Kusiger are doing so much work, they the easily came out ahead. That opener where he killed those RBSs, TGBs, and Panzer Bills really hurt ML Alexander a lot. Not just in the long run, a uh, short run, but also in the long run because it allowed Dirty to just do a massive counter push into his two pointer while also being annoying next to the second spawn. Which not only cost him a lot of time, but also a lot of points. Um, yeah, it was. I was actually surprised he was being so aggressive. I mean, Alexander did this with that motorized push into the two pointer, but only getting two Panzer Brills. Those TGBs, those rovers have no armor, so die very very easily. So two Panzer Brills seems quite quite low. Um. But yeah, also interesting to see that the spawn point, of course, being bigger, bigger, the very little action ha happening around the one pointers. But honestly, from what I remember, most of the time there was actually even less action happening around the one pointers. So I was actually surprised to see that there was something going on. Period. But st even even still, you saw how little Admiral Alexander valued the one pointer, uh, protecting barely protecting his CV. He bought like one additional Panzer build to somewhat protected but it could have dirty could have very easily just flown through with one of his Hueys with the rocket pots and killed it really if he wanted to but of course he didn't know about the AA situation in any case kind of a storm but I don't have a huge amount of games at least when it comes to one versus ones I have a lot of team games which I will probably again cover at some point and um, not a lot of one versus ones so honestly I take what I get and um, yeah I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll hopefully see you next time.